I want to pull your memory back to one of the first days of class. And we watched a presentation of the poem, Let America Be America Again. And the reason why I want to pull that back is because the reading was really powerful because it went back and forth from a strong, bold voice to this little timid voice that reminded the strong voice that America was never America, the, the land of the free and the brave and opportunity and riches. It was never that for everybody. And we're continually reminded of that in America today. So it's not that the strong voice said things that weren't true for some people, they just weren't true for everybody. There are different perspectives, there are different voices, and all semester long, we have talked about how do we create spaces that allow everybody's voice to be heard and valued and their diverse perspectives considered. I mean, we don't get a really good picture of what America is until we listen to all the voices. And that is the message that Langston Hughes was raising his voice to communicate um, so many years ago. And in a way that is the same message that Lou is introducing. And so, we're going to be asking in the research paper, what makes an American? What is America? Who is an American? What should Americans know? It's just this conglomeration of questions about the essential nature of America, um, what it is and, and what we think it should be, um, what an ideal America should be. And so that's where we're headed right now. Um, this week's focus is that um, you have a reading that you're going to do. And you're going to be writing reading part of Rebecca Jones, Finding the Good Argument, or Why Bother with Logic, and you're going to write a reading journal on that. I think you'll find it's a pretty easy reading. It was published in Writing Spaces, which is the same article the same book that um, E. Shelley Reed's article, uh, 10 Ways to Think About Writing was published in. It's an open source textbook. So if you think back to E. Shelley Reed, she was writing directly to you. And so reading something that's written for you as a primary audience means that that person has thought about who you are and is adapted to you, to reach you. And Rebecca Jones does the same thing. She's another English professor. And um, you're going to re be reading her introduction. It's several pages. Um, the assignment prompt um, tells you how far to keep going. So don't read the whole thing, but know that you're the primary audience. And so it's going to be easier to read than Lou because you're not the primary audience for Lou. It's going to be easier to read than Tony because you're not the primary audience for Tony. It's so much easier to read things where you are the primary audience. So anyways, read that and be prepared to discuss it on Wednesday. The other thing that we're in the process of doing is finding a research topic related to understanding America and Americans. And so I'm going to ask you to sort of crowd search topics. Now, what do I mean, find your topic? Well, I gave you your topic. What is America? But that is such a broad topic that can be explored in so many ways that I want you to narrow it. Now, this is a normal process of any research paper because you can't answer everything in a seven page paper about America and what America is. So you have to think 
in smaller chunks. Like, who is the American dream available to? What are the obstacles to the American dream? How can we develop greater democracy? Um, why is it important to vote? These are important issues about that also answer what is America, but they narrow the focus. And so I'm gonna ask you to crowd search that. And on Monday, we're going to choose specific narrow focuses and you'll sign up for that narrow focus. And the group you sign up with is gonna be your reading and research group for the next project. And in order to crowd search that, I'm gonna send you over to the Aspen Institute's website, which you see on your screens right now. And the Aspen Institute is the organization that Eric Liu belongs to. And if you look at their homepage, articles about democracy, because their goal is to increase democracy. And here's an article about identity and equity, um, decolonization. Um, here's another article about democracy. Here's another article about democracy. And if you go to events, um, you will see nothing there, um, but past events. And you can see videos and articles about climate change and education and the economy. If you hit any of these topics, business and society, um, you'll see articles and videos um, related to those. And your goal is to read and watch and find something you want to share with the class, um, something that adds to the discussion, something that you might like to know more about. Um, look for things that you don't understand, things you think are intriguing, things you think are disturbing, things you want to ask questions about to understand more deeply and share those on the discussion board. Um, and that way we can come together and talk about, you know, like where do we want this research to go? Questions about that assignment. Okay. So today we're gonna spend most of the time in discussion boards and talking about what we learn on discussion boards. And so, you know, like I'll probably call um, on group numbers. So make sure you know what group number you're in. And I will also, if there are more open questions, I may call on you randomly. I might just say, hey, Rebecca, or hey, Laika, or Michaela. Um, make sure that you know, like you either respond in the chat if you're having trouble with audio or um, that you just unmute yourself and share because otherwise I'm gonna assume that you're not actually here and I want you all to be here. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. So here's, here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to take about five minutes and I want you to take a look at Lou's article. And I want you to find the passage that you find most relatable. I want you to find the passage, find something specific in the text. Find the passage that you think is the most useful for understanding the author's main point. Find a passage that you think is important for other people to hear. Find a passage that you think some readers might struggle to understand or accept. And um, which parts resonate with you the most? It says narratives there. And I actually mean, you know, like just any passage that resonates with you. So you've read this, you've probably read it more than once. 
take about five minutes and find those passages. Alexa, set timer for five minutes.
Um, I think you're muted. We can't hear. Sorry. <laughs> I am muted. Thank you very much. All right. So you will need a copy of the PowerPoint because what I want you to do is go to another, it could be your breakout rooms, and I want you to share the passages that you chose. Okay. So let me stop the share and um, access, make sure you take the slide deck with you or notes on what those things are that you're looking for. And I'm gonna send you to your rooms. You can have about five minutes to, um, to share with each other. There are just three people in each room. Um, you may not get through everything. So um, see how much you get through and then we'll come back and share. Erin, I think you're, you didn't send the link in the, in the chat. It is in the chat. It's right at the top. Some other students said they couldn't see it and it doesn't appear on mine either. Okay. Well, that's the Democracy Journal. And this is... There we go. Okay. I'm going to send it to everyone since they can't see it. Okay. Oh, you're sending it? Yeah. Okay, I was gonna send it. Okay. Sorry, those are random things I think about. Um, let me get back to the screen. And let's, let's talk. Um, I'm gonna call on group groups and there are a lot of questions here. Um, answer any of the questions. What did you talk about in your group? Um, just let the rest of the classroom know what it is that you're discussing. So group, group one. Yeah, so we, um, I think we spent the most time talking about the passage that um, was most useful for understanding the main point. And we ended up with the one that follows the like bold text that says the challenge for Americans new and old is to make a common culture that's greater than the sum of our increasing and diverse parts. Um, and then it leads into talking about how diversity is a true asset. Um, and in order for it to be that true asset, we need a shared vocabulary. Um, because there needs to be a broad base of common knowledge so that diversity can be most fully activated. And we all kind of agreed on that one, generally. Yeah, I, I agree. I, that is, to, when I think of his main point, that is his main point. And his purpose is to get us to have those conversations, but this is his argument in that section that you're describing. Um, group two, what did you talk about most in, in your group? Group two? Uh, we ended up talking the most about the third one of like, I think it's which one do people need to hear? And it was the passage where, um, America needs to be like better than the sum of its parts, basically what group one talked about. Um, and we were just talking how like America has become like more aware of other cultures, but like we're still far off from like actually integrating them into the like norm of society kind of like actually building a culture with them included rather than just like simply being aware of them. Yeah. and. What would be the advantage? Why is this so important for people to hear, Chris? Um, I think because there's like this huge difference between knowing about a culture, like being respectful and all these things and actual legislative America taking the time to give minorities simple rights and stuff. I, I think that our culture definitely needs to be less white centric 
because that's not what it is. Um, building that safe society, I think, is really important for America to become better than the sum of its parts. Yeah, uh, uh, nicely stated, Chris. When I when I read that passage, um, and I've read this article before, but when I read it again for this particular class, I was reading it thinking about um, Wynn's article, Cannon Fodder, that so many of you read about, read and then wrote about, where um, Wynn talks about how he goes into Berkeley and he, he wants to write about Vietnamese and Vietnamese American literature. And he's told, yeah, dissertation on that won't get you a job. And he shares that with his friend, who's a Latinx professor. And he says, no, they, white people, have to learn, or we have to learn about what they, their literature, but they don't have to learn about ours. And so I, I think when I read this article, I think about Wynne's art, argument there that it's important for us to be exposed to the diversity. Again, like you said, America is more than the sum of its parts. The distinct parts matter. Um, group three, what did you talk about most? I think we talked about the passage that we found most relatable the most. And I think the one that we kind of agreed on or um, thought was very relatable, at least right now, was actually the first two paragraphs where he talks about how culture wars are just um, far from over. And I we talked about how we think that they have been thriving even more recently than when he was writing his um, essay because of everything that's happening with like politics, coronavirus and like Black Lives Matter. So we thought that we found it most relatable within like our time in history right now. Yeah, um, I wouldn't have thought of that, but yeah, I, that's totally true. Um, group, is it group four now or group five? It's group four. Group four, yay, Rebecca. Um, what did your group talk about? So our group mainly talked about the author's main point and what it was most important for the readers to understand. And we kind of like couldn't really decide between two paragraphs. So we just kind of assumed that both of them were really important. So the first one, um, the author's main point was that American, it was the paragraph that said, Americanness and whiteness are fruitfully, achingly becoming delinked because um, people are trying to preserve the past and they, they keep looking backward, which is, which, is not, which is not feasible because it's a, America is a nation that has so many cultures coming in every day and it's honestly um, evolving each day. So it's important to learn about every culture and be aware of and respectful of every culture. And then the other, my other group member also said that um, the other paragraph that was important for the main point was that um, the more serious challenge for Americans, new and old, is to make a common culture that's greater than the sum of our increasingly diverse parts because um, we're all gonna be one nation at the end of the day. We are one nation. We come from different cultures, but we are one group as a whole and uh, it's important to share um you know characteristics and um like you know features that uh sorry i just kind of get stuck sometimes with my words but um that you know unite us that make us one whole um group and then we also discussed what is what is really important for the readers to understand and that was um that it was the paragraph that talks about how um, the constitution is constantly evolving and it's a document that constantly changes. So it's okay if you know um, our ideas change because a country is not stable with its views constantly, it, it constantly changes. Yeah, I, I love that you talked about that part about whiteness and Americanness being delinked. And so yeah. we had this normative thing 
that was white culture was American. And if that's being delinked because of our diversity, then we need a new way to have a common culture, one that values both. So I see those first two ideas as not separate arguments, but actually really integrated arguments. One flows out of the other. Um, and that idea that we have to continually evolve is super, super important. Group five. Um, Group five. Um, sorry, I wasn't sure. I don't know if I was group five or not. Um, you are now. But, okay. Um, it was just me and Brina in our group, and we kind of like it was good because we talked about two different of the um, like points that we were supposed to find passages for. And we actually used the same passage for two different sections, and so um, she used it for understanding the author's main point. And I used it for um, the opinion that was most important for people to hear. And it was kind of centered around the first paragraph where it was like talking about the age of white privilege denialism on social media and Confederate monuments still standing and then proposing like ethnic studies in public schools. And um, we just kind of talked about like how all of these are like, whether we want them to be or not are like significant parts of American culture. like. They're just things that um, happen in America every single day. And like, you have to like be aware of them in order to be culturally culturally literate. Um, and so like, that really is the author's main point talking about like how like culture in America isn't just the positives, but it's also like the negatives you have to take into account and like the things that need to change um, just like running in the background and everything. That's just kind of what we went over. Yeah, thank you, Corey. Yeah, it's 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 really hard to um, sometimes it's hard to read these things, but it's important for us to read these things, and the awareness that we need that common language is shoot you can't even understand the first two paragraphs if you're not aware of some of those things if you don't have that literacy to understand those things. Um, group six. I was part of group six. Um, and basically, we talked a lot about what everybody else has been saying. I feel like we all have similar like opinions about upon like the topic of America right now. But especially what Corey and like Grace were saying, we took from um, find a passage that you find most relatable. <laughs> and what I said was. And that's only looking at race, add gender, guns, gays, and God to the mix, and the culture war seems to be raging along quite nicely. And my group agreed with me. I relate to this a lot because I'm from Portland. I'm from a very liberal space. And we don't just focus on race. We just focus on gender and equality in every area, but also organs like around Oregon is very um, conservative too other than Portland is very liberal. So like the contrasting, the war between cultures is very relatable in my sense. And they could see that where they are from and similarity to that. But basically we talked about what everybody else has been talking about too. Fiona, I'm really glad you introduced the idea that the culture wars and the divisions in America don't just surround race. Uh, yes. That is really important for us to remember that, yeah, gender guns, gays, and God to the mix, and whoa, everything blows up. And, you know, like, we want to be this diverse nation. We want to be a beautiful mosaic, and yet we keep clashing. And Lou's goal is that we no longer clash, that we listen and we understand each other. Um, group seven. Um, we talked about the uh, paragraph where he said literacy equals power basically, because obviously his goal is to elevate minorities and people that are underrepresented 
uh, in culture. He wants to rise them up into more like powerful or more representation in culture. So it's well known that knowledge equals power. And if you give them access to that type of knowledge, or even if immig he talks about immigrants as well, if they can learn or be educated on the norms and all the customs and cultures of America, they can have the equal access that uh, that white people still have to power. Really powerful passage, Drake. Um, people can't vote if they don't know that they're eligible to vote. People don't vote if they don't know how to register to vote or they don't know how to go to the polls or they don't know how to fill out a ballot. And so when people don't have literacies in these things, basic civic literacy, they are also, they lose power and nobody represents them. And there are certain parts of the population that do understand these things very, very well. And they wield this for their power. Um, I know there's an area in San Diego that, um, Kensington, that's a very rich neighborhood and it has an adjacent neighborhood and it's in the same city council district. And almost, well, until the last election, until the last election, even though the larger part of the population was in the part of the neighborhood that had poverty, the representative was always from Kensington because those were the people who voted and um, super, super disturbing. Um, group eight. So um, one thing we actually talked about, I feel like nobody's mentioned is passage that's like um, struggle to understand or accept. <clears throat> and we kind of talked about um, when he was talking about Hirsch's list and kind of the background on Hirsch and like context, it was almost a little confusing, like how um, Hirsch didn't always give his readers um, context and a lot of information about um, what America is and things. So we talked about like how it can be confusing for someone, especially we're assuming that these readers like are American or understand America, but all the context that was given to us, even by Lou, like was kind of really specific and like focused towards people who were really educated about the history of America. And even Lou didn't go into explaining all of the things he touched on that Hirsch didn't to explain. So I feel like that whole part where he's talking about the history of Hirsch, like it was a little confusing for readers and we felt like it could lose some readers to not get to the point that he was trying to make. So we found that really interesting. Yeah, he's definitely assuming a certain cultural literacy from the audience, his intended audience. He's assuming that they've heard of Hirsch. He's assuming that they've heard of these history passages that Hirsch mentions. Um, yeah, he's assuming a lot of his audience. It's not a huge audience that he's reaching. Well, he's reaching people like me. And um, when I introduce this to college students, even older college students, they hesitate a little, just like your group did, Eliza. Group nine. Um, something that I talked about was a passage that is important to hear, which was the one talking about how much non-whites have influenced American um, culture and morals and politics and aesthetics, because I think there's this just like general assumption when we think of like American culture, it's only thinking about white things, even though there's so many other things. And even if you're one of those people who recognizes how much other cultures have had an impact on our culture, it's maybe you think of it like a separate thing and not like really integrated and influenced. So I thought it was really important to hear just like straight out, you know, how much our culture is influenced by non-white people because so many times people just assume that it's only white things or like think about the founders and don't think about any of the other aspects. Really, really great point, Erica. Um, our history books are centered around white men and not about the other cultures. I read an article last week about how maybe it was time to get rid of Black History Month. And 
not to get rid of talking about Black History, but get rid of Black History Month and instead integrate all that Black history into the existing history books so that it's part of it. It's not just this very short segment because it's just as important to hear those things and, and to synthesize all the cultures um, and their contributions into who America is. Um, let's tell all of America's stories because that's how we know what America is. Um, it's right now it is 1148 and we're just about out of time. And so I wanna pause right here. Um, we'll finish up the discussion. There are a few more things that I wanted to touch on from this text. But in the meantime, make sure that you read Rebecca Jones article and that you write on her, that you're ready to talk about her. And then start exploring the Aspen Institute. Find some things that are things that you're interested in. Um, topics that capture your, in, your interest. Things that you read and you say, well, that's not right. Um, we need to pay attention to that, just as you did with this, um, this article showed you a lot of things that challenged you to think beyond just lose ideas and how it impacts America. So um, it's a 149 and you are released to go and do whatever it is that you're doing next. And I'll stick around for about five, six more minutes if you have questions. Thank you.